Howdy folks. In this tutorial, I'm going to turn the Pixdroid sample into a two-player game. So let's start by opening the sample. For now, let's disable the enemies to simplify the scene. And the first thing we want to do is create two players and set up inputs for each player. So I'm going to take our main character here and change this to player one. I'm going to duplicate it and change it to player two. I'm going to grab the character input inside this prefab and move it to be a top level object. The prefab here handles touch input if you're on a mobile device and things like that. Obviously touch input doesn't make much sense in a two player game if they're both on the same screen and same device. So we're just going to simplify it here. So let's grab that character input and rename it player one input. And we're going to enable that object. Let's delete the old input. Now duplicate player one input and change its name to player two input. For the sake of the example, I'm going to load some controller settings from the resources folder. So default controller input XML is a controller set up for a PlayStation controller. I click open. So player two is going to be using a controller and player one is going to be using a keyboard. Now we'll just have to change this data to load or else both characters are going to use the same inputs. So let's change this to Pixdroid player one and this one to Pixdroid player two. Now click on player one and find the input field on the character. We're going to drag player one input into this field. This step is not required for one player games because the input will be found automatically by the character. But when we have two inputs, we need to tell the character which one to use. Let's do the same for player two, this time dragging in the player two input. Let's hit play and see what happens. We'll see now we've got two characters and if I switch on my controller here, we see we can move them. Now at the moment the characters can't shoot each other. So let's address that. This is really a simple fix. Go to the physics 2D settings and find the character projectile layer. And just make sure, tick the box here to make sure that it also collides with characters. So now we're able to shoot the character and we'll see that their energy is reducing. Of course, if there's two characters, we need two energy bars. So let's go to the canvas and rename this to health player one, duplicate it and rename it to health player two. In the health player two, let's find the UI health component and assign player two to the character health. Now we just need to position this. We'll put player two's health on the right hand side. And maybe let's change the text just to be clear that one is for player one. And the other. For player two. Let's test that out. If I take my controller, which is player two, I can reduce player one's health. And if I take my keyboard here, 
I can reduce player 2's health. We'll see that when the character dies, the level resets. And that's for the most part working. But really, to be a two-player game, we need some way of indicating who the winner is. Let's create a new UI component called Game Over Screen and add the UI Game Over Screen to this. We can leave most of the default settings here. What we want to do is when the player dies, we want to show this screen. So let's go to player one and find the character health component. Here, we're going to add a game over action we're going to send a message to the game over screen and that message we're sending is called show which will show the game over screen. Let's just put a small delay on that. Let's also skip the death actions on game over. So when a character dies it reloads the scene but on game over we don't want to reload the scene. So we're going to skip those actions we have to do the same thing for player 2. We add one game over action. It's a send message with a small delay and it's going to send the message show. We also skip the death actions. Now currently our game over screen doesn't have any visible content. It doesn't have any words or pictures. So let's add some. First we'll add a placeholder to hold the contents. And let's just stretch both of these panels out to cover the whole screen. Now let's add some content. Let's first add some text that says game over. We'll center the text, pick a nice pixely font, and make it larger. Let's go larger. Okay, the last thing we need to do is we need to save the players' lives. What do I mean here? Well, at the moment, our death action reloads the scene, which means all the data will get reset on the scene. This is what persistence is for. The character health will persist the character's lives. So what we want to do is load the data when we wake up. We want to save the data when the character dies. So for example, when they die, they will lose a life. So let's save that. And finally, we want to reset it back to zero when the scene is exited. But wait, we haven't got a way to exit the scene yet. So let's go to our game over screen and add a game over action which will reload the scene. So player one now has their persistence set up, but player two doesn't. So let's click player two and set the same persistence settings. We'll load the settings on awake, we'll save them when the character dies, and we'll reset them when we exit the scene. So let's disable this game over panel and assign it to be the visible component of the game over screen.
That means it's the component that will be shown when the game ends. Let's hit play and see what happens. So we're killing our player. And I think the player has three lives. So we should expect that on the last life, we see a game over screen. Which we can reset again by pressing a key. The final thing we might want to do is show that one player defeated the other player. This isn't something we can do out of the box, but we can do it with a very simple script. So let's create a C-sharp script called show the winner. Now we're going to use something from Platformer Pro, so let's add the using Platformer Pro directive. But what we're going to do is when this component is enabled, it's going to set some text. Now given we're working with text, let's require a text component. And to use that text component, we'll need to import the unityengine.ui namespace. So at some point we're going to do something with this text component. We're going to set some text to say who won. How are we going to detect who won? Well, let's take some references to character health. And then we can loop through those references. And if the current lives of that player equals zero, meaning it's the player who died, we can get our text component. And we know that's not going to return null because we've required the text component. And we'll set its text to be player variable zero has been defeated. And that variable zero will be set to i plus one. Remember that the array is zero indexed, but we want to call the player player one at the zeroth index. Now, once we've set that text, there's nothing more we need to do. So let's just break out of that loop. Let's save that script, go back to Unity. We'll duplicate this game over text here. Move it down a little. And it's gonna look something like this. Firstly, the size can probably be a little bit smaller. And maybe we'll make it a bit wider. That looks pretty good. So we don't need the text to be there because what we're going to do is drop this show the winner component on there. I'm going to add two characters to look at. Character one, character two. And we'll call this show the winner text. Disable this game object. Save our scene. Hit play. Now we'll have to kill our player a few times. Player two has been defeated. 
Now the only other thing we might want to do to make it a little more exciting is move the spawn locations of the character. Move player two over to the other side. Maybe we could add a little bit more excitement by turning on a couple of these enemies as well. Now, of course, it's a little bit hard to play a two-player game when you only have this one of you. But you get the idea. Of course, the other thing not to forget is that we can aim in this sample. So... Can do some cool stuff like shoot the player downwards. It looks like player one's going to win here. Player two has been defeated. And there you have it 15 minutes for a two player game.